Cybersecurity is next. That's the subtext behind every article, every chart, every AI hype headline making the rounds right now. Entry level roles, gone. Analysts, automated. Entire teams, replaced by models that don't sleep, don't blink, and never burn out. But here's the problem. Almost none of those claims are rooted in actual deployment data, team structures, or labor market shifts. In this episode, I'll dissect those claims, every single one of them, every layoff, every stat, every quote, against actual data, market shifts, and seven years of AI deployments on cybersecurity teams. And at the end, we're gonna look at our AI signal card, showing which roles are really being automated, which ones are evolving, and where the capital is flowing. Let's dive in. Case in point. Goldman Sachs 2023 report on generative AI predicts 300 million full-time jobs being put at risk by 2030, with cybersecurity cited as vulnerable due to automation. CrowdStrike, a well-known American cybersecurity company based in Austin, Texas, announces 5% job cut, saying that AI is reshaping every industry. Cybersecurity threats on Reddit are full of comments like these. Here's one of the best examples. A user on Reddit took the time to conduct an experiment using Claude code. He analyzed a WordPress plugin for vulnerabilities. The author notes that currently AI struggles with certain nuanced aspects. For example, generated perfect exploit paid loads. But the gap is closing fast. A series of online articles written by sources dedicated to cybersecurity agree that Gen AI will reduce the skill gap in the field, citing sources like Gartner, who theorized that about 50% of entry-level cybersecurity positions will be eliminated. I'll test these claims against independent data sources, field reports, and actual data to give you a detailed data-backed analysis on which of them hold true and which ones are clearly exaggerating. The evidence. When it comes to cybersecurity, predictions are generally framed around three areas. End-to-end -end automation, where AI is promoted as being able to triage, investigate, and remediate incidents with little or no human oversight. Superior pattern recognition. The claim rests on the belief that machine learning can outperform humans at detecting subtle or emerging threats. And reduction of error and fatigue. Given that AI does not experience burnout or lapses in concentration, it is often said to be able to replace analysts who are susceptible to such issues. Now, let's talk about what AI is truly capable of doing. AI systems can continuously analyze vast streams of logs, network data, and user activities to flag anomalies and potential threats. Machine learning models can classify and prioritize incidents based on risk, context, and potential business impact. As AI models learn and adapt, they can decrease the volume of unnecessary alerts, lowering analyst fatigue and missed signals. AI tools can connect disparate data points across endpoints, networks, emails, and cloud services, uncovering relationships and attack paths that would take humans much longer to recognize. Advanced systems do offer security analysts richer context upfront through threat intelligence. Once incidents are validated, AI systems can execute predefined containment or mitigation steps, such as isolating endpoints, disabling compromised accounts, blocking IPs with little to no human intervention. AI can generate detailed documentation after the incident, which response actions were taken, and lesson learned. Now, let's look how many companies have actually integrated AI into cybersecurity on their teams and whether it's actually working. For this section, I will be getting my data from a very recent study conducted by a US-based nonprofit organization called ISC2, International Information System Security Certification Consortium, described as the world's largest IT security organization. This is a very strong and credible report that has been widely cited by news sources just in time for the video. The study is based on insights from 436 US-based cybersecurity professionals working at organizations of all sizes. So, enterprise organizations with staff size over 10,000 employees lead the adoption of AI in cybersecurity, with 37% actively using AI platforms. Mid to large companies between 2,500 to 10,000 employees and smaller companies between 100 and 2,500, each with 33% adoption. The smallest organizations happen to be the most conservative, with 20 23% reporting no plans to evaluate AI security tools. Now, what is AI being used for on CyberSec teams? AI is being used the most in network monitoring and intrusion detection. This covers log and data heavy functions where AI performs repetitive and time intensive work, produces fast responses and reaction times for detection, endpoint protection and response, vulnerability management, and threat modeling. All of these tasks involve analyzing large data sets for monitoring real time network information. And lastly, security testing, which is a very time consuming task for cybersecurity personnel. AI 
AI expedites the efficiency of testing and ensures that it's being done correctly. If you map what the companies claim to be using AI for to what AI can actually do, you will see that these things are matching and AI is truly being used for a lot of things cybersecurity. And you may go, okay, so what you said before isn't really hype after all, and cybersecurity is indeed being replaced. Hold up, let's talk about historic trends. AI began being widely integrated into cybersecurity teams at tech companies starting 2018, with rapid acceleration and widespread integration occurring in the early 2020s. The first two years, it was marked by machine learning tools for threat detection and automated responses, like blocking suspicious activity, isolation affected endpoints, and behavioral analytics. Between 2020 and 2022, AI evolved to real-time analytics analytics, analyzing massive volumes of data in real time and allowing cybersec teams to scale incident triage and response. Also, AI systems improve their ability to predict attacks. Starting 2023 until present, AI went through widespread adoption and autonomous security. Platforms like Darktrace and CrowdStrike, for example, now produce fully autonomous responses. Gen AI is being used by both defenders and attackers for smarter deepfakes, phishing, LLM poisoning, which creates the need for rapid threat modeling and simulation of attack scenarios. All of this is to say that AI in CyberSec is not new. It's been making its way for the past seven years, and this is before ChatGPT, before Perplexity, before AI first everything. So of all tech specializations we're reviewing in this series, CyberSec is a really good example because it didn't start two years ago. AI in cybersecurity has been used for a long time. Okay, so AI in CyberSec has been around for a while, so teams must have been shrinking for the past seven years right? Let's see. Looking at the recent layoff data, AI integration in cybersecurity operations at major tech companies in the US is set to directly contribute to layoffs in entry-level and repetitive operational roles. But what does this really mean? Microsoft cut 3% of its global tech force in May and July 2025. Cybersec numbers are not disclosed, but internal reporting and external analysis confirm that security operations and manual monitoring roles are among those affected as AI-based security scales up. Amazon, at least hundreds of jobs eliminated within AWS, including security operations units in July 2025. Again, specific numbers for CyberSec were not disclosed. Meta laid off about 5% of workforce in 2024, including SOC and trust and safety teams. Laid off roles were the ones handling routine incident and policy workflows. Data among smaller companies or non-FANG enterprises is similar, between 5-20% to layoffs on the company level, specific cybersecurity numbers not cited, but the affected roles include technical writers in security teams, manual reporting, and monitoring roles. What's interesting is that offshoring or nearshoring is not nearly as pronounced compared to other tech roles such as customer-facing support, QA, or software engineering. So while AI has been integrated into CyberSec teams and the layoffs have indeed affected CyberSec roles, in all fairness, they've been affected just as much as all other roles across the tech industry. And the most affected roles are in manual monitoring, routine incident handling, basic vulnerability management, Management. All of this is routine and repetitive work that AI can't objectively do better. Now let's see how the team composition has changed over the years. Here's a typical cybersecurity team composition at a mid-sized tech native company in the US as of 2018. In 2020, we're seeing roles such as cloud security engineer, especially in software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service. This role emerged as a core role on the team due to the explosion of cloud adoption and remote work. GRC expanded their workload as data privacy such as GDPR, CCPA became more prominent. Usually the teams range from 6 to 18 people of dedicated staff, depending on the company's size, pace of cloud adoption, and industry regulations. In 2023, the delineation between security architect and and security engineer became much more pronounced. Prior to 2023, this was often merged into one role. SOC Analyst 1 and 2 merged into one. The introduction of Chief Information Security Officer as a C-suite role. Security engineer scope of responsibilities expanded outside of network. Teams began blending centralized security functions with embedded specialists, for example, embedding security analysts into product or cloud squads. As a PM, I can attest to this, I was a platform PM in 2023, and my collaboration with security teams became much closer. This was the first year when I truly felt that push to shift left concept. In case you haven't heard about the shift left concept, it can apply to numerous things really, but the core concept is that you start thinking about, in this case, security early on before you release product updates. Automation and AI and alert triage and incident workflows. Analysts increasingly reviewing and tuning automated findings. Pen testing and threat intelligence to handle proactive testing to stay ahead of evolving threats. Typical team size is very similar, 
7 to 20 people of dedicated security staff. 2025, most routine event detection, alert triage, reporting, and vulnerability scanning are handled by AI platforms. The typical team size is 5 to 12 dedicated security folks on the team. Security roles are embedded within product and IT teams to ensure security is addressed in all deployments. Shift left security is the standard. AI risk and adversarial defense are major priorities, prompting new specialized roles. Ongoing upskilling, all team members are expected to maintain high fluency in AI security management and cloud native defense. So as you can see, despite AI being integrated into CyberSec for quite a few years now, the function isn't gone, isn't automated, and isn't replaced. Lastly, let's go through the CyberSec trends for the next five years. Cybersecurity is widely cited as the industry that will experience one of the highest shortages in the tech industry in the next five years. Multiple publications cite huge numbers. 67% of companies experience skill gap. World shortage over 4 million cybersecurity specialists. 70% of companies attribute increased cyber risk to the skills gap. So wherever you look, you will see that cybersecurity is the job of the AI era. We will talk about how the requirements are changing for the junior specialists, but for the love of God, please stop panicking. If there is anything that's not dying, it's cybersec. The human factor. Look, I know everybody's freaking out about AI taking over our jobs and all the doom and gloom headlines, but honestly, that's not what's happening in cybersecurity right now. The reality is much more interesting. As AI gets smarter, the cyber criminals are getting smarter too. And we're seeing a ton of attack vectors that did not exist before. And we haven't even started scratching the surface of how AI will be used as the time goes on. We're still in the early stages of AI regulation. The US does not even have proper federal laws governing it yet. But when those regulations do hit, it's going to be a lot of work for cybersecurity teams. I learned this the hard way. This was years back before the AI boom. I was working on a fintech product and that product operated in Europe and GDPR literally drove me insane. Every month, every quarter, there were new rules, new regulations and new changes and we'd have to audit our entire product all over again to stay compliant. And that wasn't even an AI product. And attack surfaces are exploding. By 2027, almost half of chief security officers are going to have to expand way beyond traditional cybersecurity because the regulatory pressure and attack surfaces are exploding. So instead of AI killing cybersecurity jobs, it's actually making the field more complex and essential than it's ever been. How to stay afloat. Here is a scorecard for cybersecurity in the age of AI. Risk of automation, entry level and routine rules, eight to nine, mid-level and specialized, 45, and advanced roles that require context, creativity, reasoning, and industry expertise, one at most. Now, I would like to address the point around junior specialists being out of demand. No, 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 no. Junior specialists, the skill set of which remained in 2020, are out of demand. That's true. But junior roles aren't going anywhere. They're just not the same roles you saw five years ago. Which skills will be needed for junior specialists? AI native SOC analyst, working with AI platforms to enhance security information and event management. AI threat intelligence analyst, focus on helping train and validate AI models by managing large data sets of threat indicators. Automation and security orchestration, supporting the development and maintenance of security automation scripts. AI governance and compliance associates, most likely an entry-level role, ensuring AI systems used in security are operating in alignment with ethical and compliance expectations. Security testing assistance, testing the robustness of AI-driven security tools, including evaluating their response to adversarial inputs. Cloud security support analysts, working with AI-enhanced cloud security monitoring tools to ensure the safety, availability, and defense of key cloud services and data repositories. AI just bulldozed the busy work, but it did not cancel cybersecurity. It leveled it up. The only gigs that are getting axed are click here to triage rules, but the jobs that ask you to outsmart an LLM-powered attack or turn brand new attacks into bulletproof controls just became mission critical. So stop doom scrolling, start model testing, and own the space where GPT meets GDPR. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, I hope this was helpful. Till next time.